I realized that the film must have really moved you because I didn't get any call from you. Yeah. <laughs> For me, from the start of it only, it was beyond a box office number. My single most ambition with this film is that it needs to do the numbers for more and more people to come and watch this yeah. and be aware of Absolutely. this situation. It started with me, with them dubbing my voice. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, so I was also told that my voice is not good and uh, we should dub your voice. These are the films that my father couldn't see and I'll always be curious to know what he would have felt. In fact, when my family and my charters and all saw it, and when they told me that if dad was alive, he would be so proud of me. Yeah, he would have been. I began crying. I was like, that was like something that uh, I always get emotional about. But yeah, I'm holding on to the one who's still there around me. And she's quite crazy. <laughs> my mom. <laughs> there are a few actors who are magical on screen. But there are a few more actors who are just simply magic themselves. Today sitting with me is a woman who has always been um, an embodiment of strength, power, grit and fabulous performances. I will tell you what I felt after watching Mrs. Chatterjee vs. Norway but before that let me introduce Rani Mukherjee in conversation with me only on Bollywood Bubble. Hello! <laughs> I will uh, movie me Bengali hai. Matlab Bengal, there's so much of Bengali in the movie I, I had to start off like this Ki Kamon Acho. Ami Bhalo Achi, Tumi Kamon Acho. Vishon Bhalo. I have to tell you that um, your I'll tell you from the trailer, okay? I watched the trailer at least hundred times. Okay. And in the last two weeks there have been times where because of health or something, I've been a little down oh. and I felt like crying and I couldn't I mean I couldn't huh. cry. And I watched the trailer and I broke down. Oh. And um, that was like oh, my, kind of a release. Yeah, it, it helped me release my emotions. And when I watched the movie, I knew what I was prepared for. I have cried buckets, I feel. <laughs> Initially, I was handling my friend Bhavna, who also you will be meeting, because she was crying from the very first scene when you fall down. Right. But as the story moves, I think everybody was crying, everybody was rooting for your character. I have cried in front of my mother also yesterday. I don't know, I don't want to like think about it and break down here because I thought I will control. You are magic. And I'm not saying it because I really like you, but whoever will watch it will believe me. They will also feel the same. For an audience, it was a moment of pathos, you know. It was so much of angst. It was so much of anger at times. It was so much of emotions. As an actor, did you feel that, was it difficult emotionally when you were doing those scenes? So for me, uh, Nandeep, when the story came to me, it came to me early Jan in 2021. And we were in the midst of the pandemic. Yeah. So we all were in a very difficult phase of our lives because there was so much of fear. Yeah. We didn't know when this virus is going to engulf our family or True. us, you know, and everybody was like, you know, treading and taking their steps very carefully. Like we were sanitizing everything, everything and everything that was possibly there in this, yeah. uh, in the house coming from out or whatever. It was a crazy time. And at that point when this story came to me, when Nikhil called me and said that, you know, I want you to consider this film which you want you to do and this is the subject and this is a, based on a true story. I actually thought he was joking because what he told me as the story, as the one line, which is there in the yeah. trailer as well, it was very baffling to me because I'm a mother myself and on top of that I'm a Bengali mom. Yeah. And I have been raised by a Bengali mom. Exactly. And I have too many Bengali moms as references around me. So for me, I was in disbelief and shock. So I hung up and I started doing my research and I googled this case. And what baffled me even further was that Indian media had extensively uh, showcased this case on their television channels. Indian government was yeah. involved. There was chatter about it in the parliament. And what amazed me was that in 2011, I started to think what was I doing in that year that I did not follow this case so I did not come to know about this case and that's what moved me to be part of this film because Lovely. I realized that there are so many people like me who don't know about this case and who would be seeing this case for the first time when they come to see this film. True. So many people understood this case when they saw the trailer the first time. Like I saw a lot of reactions yeah. where people were in disbelief that something like this has actually happened and not only in India. I've seen reaction all across the globe for the trailer and in every trailer, 
everybody was in shock yeah that something I like agree. this is actually a true story so for me it was very important that this story be told it was very important for me that this uh, story needs to be made and especially for sagarika a woman who stood so tall absolutely in fighting for her children and the beauty of her character is that she never gave up in spite of being pushed to a corner several times in spite of not getting the support from her own family yeah. you know the way she fought because she only stood by one belief that i want my children back you know and that is what made me inspired to play the role of devika and the good part about the film is that it's a happy ending yeah because everybody asked me do you know this my friends because after the after it was announced that you're doing a film like this yeah. that is when i started googling as well and when i read i have i've watched those interviews of shagurika as well right and so my friends knew that i knew i have i have studied the whole thing Case. as well yeah. so bhavna kept telling me that because she was getting like very worked up and she was telling me i hope it's a happy ending mm. i hope it's a happy ending. i didn't want to tell them but i in deep down i knew that yes there is a happy ending to it but it was not just a fight that she had to fight against the country they were she was fighting her own people people yes. and it is so tragic you it know it is tragic and i think that's the reason why this film had to be made is because to tell people and remind people to believe in themselves yeah. believe in their own fight their own rights and wrongs absolutely and believe in what they feel is right just because somebody is telling you that you are a particular way that doesn't mean that you become that person yeah. like in case of debika there were things thrown at her saying that she was mentally unstable and that can be damaging to a person's yeah. uh, self confidence you know but she fought through she didn't care absolutely and i think that is the learning that we need to get from our real life heroes that no matter what you have to continue fighting for what you believe in and eventually things will fall in place justice will prevail absolutely and for me what saddens me is that unlike sagarika there are a lot of other parents who have not won this they are separated from their children and i hope with this film there is more awareness and children are reunited with their parents when you talk about that i would have come to it much later you know when a film moves you it's something else but when a trailer creates a revolution it is it becomes grander the whole purpose is solved i've spoken to ashima did you did you know that there is something called boycott germany that was trending right after this trailer release yes. because um they want india wants germany to release a one and a half year old who has been kept in custody uh, for um, for almost 14 months of her life and this is when you speak about awareness and parents not getting to meet and not getting their children this is what is happening does that give you a sense of validation that you've at least you've achieved such a huge thing it's not just about this film is beyond numbers you know right i think this film for me from the start of it only it was beyond a box office number it was beyond what eventually will happen with the film in terms of there will be some people who like it there will be some people who won't like it there will be some people who will not be able to uh, see a a story like this because it's just too real for yeah. them to even uh, kind of uh, understand but for me my single most ambition with this film is that it needs to do the numbers for more and more people to come and watch this yeah. and be aware of the situation because we have so many of our relatives and friends who live abroad but the conversation has never been about what prejudices or what trials and tribulations they must have gone through to adapt to another country all we talk about is how wonderful abroad their lives is are how better and how, and how great they are but where we don't ask pertinent questions are are they genuinely happy where they are and and whether they are okay to adapt or uh, some some people are okay but some people who are too connected to their roots might find it difficult yeah and have been probably finding it difficult for over so many years you know periods of time so i think this film also has started that kind of conversation because i heard a lot of chatter yeah. regarding that um you know what they have felt and what people feel who are living outside of our country so i think this film is a lot more than just a mother's fight against the country there's a lot, more than, there's a lot there's more, more than that and i think when people watch the movie they'll realize that it's just not a movie about a mother's belief or fight or love it is also about the same love and belief that we have for our own country absolutely you know 
you made us like the team made us watch the movie much before release and uh, i have to tell you if, if people have come and told you this but i have to have to tell you that there are so many moments where people were not just watching the movie they were so involved that they have either had a shock they have either clapped when um, anirban's character slaps you people have gone like with yeah. anger and the very next moment when you slap him back everybody has clapped in the audience and i'm talking about a press screening and i'm not lying anybody who has watched the movie will tell you the same there is a particular scene where you are promised like devika's character is almost going to meet the kids and then they are told that no you cannot and in the kindergarten farm yes. and then she's taken away while she's being videographed and then you throw your leg like that up in the air you yeah. know i think you've got every nuance correct because i'm i'm from a bengali family my mother will listen to 500 things said against her but she will not listen to anything against, against you me or yeah. my brother yeah. and that's possibly the most human emotion that we have did you did, how do you feel about the responses that have come already <laughs> it feels very very gratifying of course also there is nervousness um because when a film is so close to you um you want to know whether it's impacted the people the same way that it impacted me yeah uh, so the so what i felt what you guys felt at the screening is what i felt when i heard the uh, story for the first time because for me that was a revelation and for me it was a moment of disbelief that i was struggling to believe that things that are normal to us could yeah. be a problem for other people outside yeah. the country yeah uh, it made me think of that because when we go abroad we are not meant to follow a certain rule and regulation True. True. we are enjoying the uh vacation and we are coming back we are not living there to understand that oh my god there could be a a rule or regulation which people might have to follow living in a particular country True. you know so those were things that made me sit back and think and made me realize that oh my god uh, loving your own country being in your own country is so much of a, a relief and leveler for us that we take our countries for granted we living in our country we take that for granted but actually we should be thanking that we are a part of that, this country that we are part of this so country true. and and we should be thanking our stars we are born in india that's uh, why i will never search settle abroad <laughs> i cannot matlab i i just can't yeah neena ji was part of the movie yes. you know 3 years ago i remember this interview that i had done with neena ji and uh, she had said something wonderful she said what is love love is not what exists between two lovers or even a couple she said that you know that love still has a hint of lust in it but the best definition of love is what the a parent child. has towards their kids what a mother has towards her kids primarily you are a mother today and she was a part of the movie and such a beautiful part of the movie yes. when i saw that i to, i felt that that same thing just came in flashback you are a mother today you've been raised by a very strong fierce bengali mom i want to understand that you know There are so many times you have also decided and broken um, the narratives of being an actor or being a woman and your mom has always been there by your side how important was it to have your mother and what are the things that you've learned from her as a mother I think even in this film what primarily you understand is that mothers are around us all the time without us even knowing about yeah. it like they are there in our subconscious they are there giving us the strength which we might not particularly understand it because they are there and we take them for granted most of the time because they are always there for yeah. us but on in times when they are not around us is when we understand the void and the pain and for me my mother has been one such character who has been with me right from childhood where i don't remember a single day that i have uh, must have had without her being in my life yeah. whether it's even after marriage even after me having adira my day starts with talking to my mom on the phone uh, that's the first call i make you know and that is what keeps me grounded the entire day that is what keeps me going the entire day because for me it's important for me to know that she's doing well um you know we have chats we have our laughs we have our gossip session <laughs> and you know it's the adda you know adda and and uh, now because of my um life which is very different from what it was before i got married and before i had a child um mom and dad were like always there for me you know 
it was never that I had to take an appointment to be with them. So that is how we Indians are raised. Yeah. That our parents are always there, you know. Uh, but after my marriage, after I lost my dad, I think there has been a shift uh, in the understanding of how important that time is that you spend with your parents because it's never enough for a child. Absolutely. You know. In the movie, Devika's father stands by her through and through. Yeah. In real life. Very much like my dad. Yes. In real life, your father has stood through the text testing times and the celebrations yes. with you. Yes. I remember you had told me that you carry one memory of him in every film. Yes. What, what was that memory that you carried in this one? So in this film, these actors who you see from Bengali cinema, yes. they're all part of my father's films. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so it was... Um, it, it was quite surreal for me to be able to uh, spend time with them and speak about my dad and in a way I feel my dad lingers on with me every time because um, I still believe that he's around me and his blessings are there but with each new film that I do after my dad's passed away especially Hitchki was the first film that I did after my dad passed um, these films will always be incomplete for me because these are the films that my father couldn't see and I'll always be curious to know what he would have felt. In fact, when my family and my charges and all saw it, and when they told me that if dad was alive, he would be so proud of me. Yeah, he would have. I began crying. I was like, that was like something that uh, I always get emotional about. Uh, but yeah, but that is my reality today. I've lost a parent. Uh, but yeah, I'm holding on to the one who's still there around me. And she's quite crazy, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> you have been, you know, one of the most wonderful um, kids that one can have, you know. Because I come from um, Bengal, we have stories there. When I came to Bombay also, I've heard stories from my seniors about how you have always been very protective about your family and how you've always cared for them. And I have met you mm. um, at different occasions, even when you lost your father, I have met you and I, I could see the pain that you were in. It's very difficult to even think of a day without them. You know, that's possibly why I cried yesterday. <laughs> I called up my mother and I just felt like, um, I don't know if I should say it, but you know those Chotavala that wish used to come? Yeah. I don't know, maybe because it's my father going through a lot of those health issues and everything when I've seen him go through a lot of health issues when I was young. I just always had have this sinking feeling that I wouldn't be able to do anything without them. And those wishes, I've always prayed, I should say it out a lot, that I've always prayed that I go before them. Because oh, no. I don't think I can lead. No. Lead uh, My mom also, my mom to slaps me so when yeah. I say all this. But if you were not in an interview, maybe... You would have also slapped me? No, I wouldn't have slapped you, but I would fire you <laughs> no. for speaking like this. I know, but um, it's just that, that emotion is something and it's a universal emotion, you know, the parent child and emotion. child emotion, which works wonderfully in your film. I, yes. It connected so deeply that it has left wounds and scars that I can't even speak about and I'm not saying it because you're sitting in front of me. People who've seen me yesterday from the team has seen um, what I felt. I went and hugged Sarita ma'am because she's my Bombay mother. She was there. I said, listen, my mother is in Calcutta. At least you are here, so let me just hug you. Yeah, so I, I realized that the film must have really moved you because I didn't get any call from you. Yeah, <laughs> because I, I thought that I'm coming here and I might as well. It was very difficult to put into words what I felt. I felt I that know. anyway, I'm going to meet you today. So I'm going to tell you in person. Yeah. No, I knew and I wanted to know if you're okay because I know that the film would move you to a certain extent. Yeah. And I made sure to find out that are you okay and whether you've seen it. <laughs> yes, um, I Because did. I wanted to uh, know if you're okay because I know how emotional you are. Thank you. And I, know, <laughs> and I know that this film would have moved you the way like it has now that I know yeah. that it has. Uh, so I'm glad that you're okay. But you know, I have grown up watching you, I've grown up admiring you in a certain way and I'm almost idolizing you, if not patronizing it. Um, we've always felt proud because you exist. There are very few actors from that generation who have been part of that change and who have evolved so much that, you know, they say that ek time or other actresses have a longevity. You've completely shattered those myths and today, if you see, I think you are one of those few, all your films have worked. Even post your wedding, post your motherhood and everything. Those are the shackles that we live in. How does it make you feel? You also heard those when you were going through those phases. Yes, when you were yes, getting absolutely, married or when you were absolutely. Having... No, it started with me, with them dubbing my voice. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, so I was also told that my voice is not good. And uh, 
we should dub your voice uh, yeah so i think as saverika uh, believed in herself i think i also believed in myself when i was 16 17 and it's a difficult period uh, to be able to believe in yourself because yeah. that is a time when you know as a teenagers we are confused and and we try to want to be accepted by one and all but uh, through this interview i'd like to tell all the youngsters if they're watching this that uh, please don't listen to people listen to your heart listen to yourself believe in yourself and that is what i did when i was 16 and because of my belief i have been able to do this interview with nayandeep today here after so many years i hope we do that till i'm 80 <laughs> So, so yeah, it is very important to believe in yourself. And for me, um, whether what people have told about me, whether my career is finished, whether it's over, whether it's restarting, it's uh, coming back, it is going, whatever they have said, uh, for me, I have always believed in one thing that till the time I'll be able to deliver uh, a good performance and a good film to my audience, to my fans, they will always support me. You know, and for me, that is most important. So what people say about motherhood, about marriage, stands true for those people who don't respect their audiences. In my case, I think I respect my audience too much because they have given me a lot more than I ever thought I would yeah. receive. So for me, I think I should continue doing that as long as I'm able to do my work sincerely and I work well. I hope uh, that you continue to inspire people forever because um, you have always been the face of today and you will be the face of tomorrow forever and uh, I just love you, <laughs> that's all I will say. I loved you as Debika, I love you as Rani Mukherjee, not the actor but the human being because yes you do care and it always shows and yes I always said this that there are two people in this uh, industry who I will always call dibs on whenever there's an interview I'm sorry it's Shah Rukh Khan and you I will not let anybody come in that space <laughs> but I have got something for you just to celebrate um, your journey and also a little something for Adira I think Adira will like oh, it more sweet. than uh, you okay that is so sweet so these are something to celebrate oh, you wow, thank you um, you can see what it is can it's I a little see? Uh, different, but I hope you like it. Oh, that's so sweet. Wow. So these are basically miniatures of all your, most of your iconic oh my characters. Oh that is so cute. Oh, wow. Should I show it to them? How cute are these? Can you see? Oh my God. You're right, Adira will love it. It's so cute. I can't believe it. I was just telling that now Adira can play with her mom's dolls. <laughs> oh my god, it's so cute. So both are the same? No, it's different. Different characters. Oh wow. So I should see this as well. Oh wow. I'm in love. I'm in love with these small oh, miniatures. They're so, so cute. Thank They're you. They're so cute. They're so cute. Oh my god. My God, it takes me back yeah, it to is all, all my memories. Oh my God! I'm Love. happy. I'm glad Nandi, that you. Come here. Let me give you a hug. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. So sweet. You always do something special for me. Always. But thank you. You have done the most special thing for all of us uh, from our generation, from my um, other generation, the generations to follow. That is that you exist. <laughs> Somebody like you exists and we are proud and um, thank you, just a mere thank you wouldn't help because when people watch and I always say this that people say today's time ki content film mein dekhni hai, ye nahi dekhni, wo nahi dekhni. if they really want to watch it they have to give this movie a chance because it has the content that everybody really really that will move everybody and I feel that. Thank, thank you for you. doing this. Thank you.